Now, if you've ever wondered what happens to electric car batteries when they get to the end of their life and where they go to die, well, here's the answer. Chris, what have we got? This is the charge cube. If you need more power, we might have the solution. Today, we're at Felton Systems near Bristol to see some classic cars that have been converted to electric, have a look around their state-of-the-art facility, and check out how they're changing the game when it comes to portable power. Come and have a look inside here because this is very impressive. Inside here are some batteries that will be taken out of electric vehicles. Chris, tell us a little bit more. So these are Tesla Model 3 batteries, but we can use batteries from all sorts of vehicles, BMW, Polestar, BYD, mix, mix and match. So they're out of whether accident damage EVs or EVs that are high mileage. So most of the high mileage EVs are still on over 80% of capacity. And once you get to that 80% point, the degradation is slows right down. So you may find you get 20 years more out of those batteries in an energy storage charge cube. Once we've done our checks, make sure they're all good to be reused, they'll then get stacked up to six high inside of the charge cube, which gives us up to 450 kilowatt hours of battery. And then has AC in and AC out, so it runs multiple seven kilowatt chargers or CCS rapid charging, fast as well. Not, not just like a little 60 kilowatt rapid charging, we've got you know, 240 kilowatt rapid charging. We could go even more long term, but we just don't want to push it that much yet. There's sort of no excuse to not have charge infrastructure really anymore, because you can just deploy them anywhere you want to go. So these are brilliant. If you are running a festival or some sort of outdoor event, you haven't got access to the grid, just get one of these. Drop one of these in, do your event power or do your charge infrastructure at the event as well, which as you know, there's never chargers at events, ever. Or if there is, they're running on massive diesel generators, which is even worse. We get a lot of people saying what happens to the batteries, and, and it's great to see people like yourselves doing clever things. What gave you the inspiration for this? So for years we've been thinking about doing it, but finally it's sort of got to the point where the electronics have got what they need to get to that we can get them cost effectively. And there's now so many EVs on the road, so many batteries coming available. It's now worth us actually building a product based around Second Life. Mainly the reason we've done it is infrastructure needs to grow quickly. These are mainly designed for fleet. So where you have a yard like we're in now, but you don't have enough power coming into your yard, you've got a small amount, but you want to run loads of electric vans, for instance. You don't want to pay hundreds of thousands to bring extra power in most of the time you don't own the unit. So drop one of these in, put the power you've got available into it, the battery buffers that you can charge all your vans or your lorries overnight, and then get them back on the road the next day. But the big thing with those vehicles is they're probably the highest polluting vehicles in the UK or planetary because they do so many miles. Yet we're all focused on these beautiful day-to-day -day cars for us, but most of the time they sit and sit and not driven, whereas those vehicles get driven every single day. And if you're a landlord as well and you don't want to mess up your, your, your ground and, and dig holes and put in all the infrastructure, this is the solution. Definitely, yeah, it's, it's drop in, you know, online within hours, no plan of permission because nothing's permanent, it's all temporary. I mean, semi-permanent, they could sit there for 10 years, but you know, it would still be, still be good. What's your background in this? Why did you so, get into it? So, originally we did retrofit, so lovely classic cars, taking second life batteries, rebuilding them into custom battery packs and building electric Porsches, Minis, Landers, we still do and we still love that, but it also taught us how to reverse engineer these and make them work, which obviously a lot of companies don't have that that knowledge base. Before that though, I was events. So I used to do big power generation, big generators, temporary events. So I've sort of got this weird knowledge between EV and electronics, as well as events and how all that works and how much people have used products. <laughs> <laughs> to build something that's robust, it can be hit into, it's, you know, it's a solid lump, it's a sea container at the end of the day. Well, let's come around the side a little bit because we've got a, a Zappi from My Energy. Yep, Big fan of, of this, I've got one of these on the side of my home, but you've obviously put it onto this because it's solid Oops. and it's charging a Mini. And you might think, oh, hang on a minute, why are you putting electricity into a petrol car? Well, this is one of your converts. Yes, this is an electric converted Mini. Um, we do basically a bolt-in kit for this. We actually worked with BMW on these, we did load for their marketing department, so they've sort of been checked over by the German engineers to make sure they were happy with the quality and everything. Uh, we've got quite a lot of these now and they'll do 110 miles on a charge, perfect little city car. It's like an electric go-kart and it's like double the speed of the original one. Whoa, that's quick, <laughs> isn't it? Bloody hell. It's a mini that's doing zero to 60 in what, sub six seconds? Rowan Atkinson, <laughs> if you're watching, this is what you need, mate. And it's zero emissions. You can take it into London, into the zero emissions yes, zone. Definitely. And it's charging on this um, seven kilowatts. Seven kilowatts. You've got yeah. various different levels of we've, charge. We've got various different it. levels. So obviously seven, eleven, twenty-two. But we're also doing CCS rapid charging. So inside the main door, you'd have a two hundred and forty kilowatt CCS rapid charger with battery storage. Because that's the big issue with the grid is they don't like the big high peaks that the CCS chargers do. We have to put a huge amount of power in. So with the battery there, you can buffer it all day long and then do a massive power draw out of the batteries for doing rapid charging and then just slowly fill it up again. 
which is quite a key thing. We've also got the little pavilions. So they have charger either side at seven kilowatts. You basically plug the main charge tube into these and this allows you for little deployable units that you can drop in multiple car parking spaces because you can't all get around one cube. So you can basically have six of these per charge cube. So then it allows you to have in theory 12 to 14 chargers set out in your yard. Um, and they're pretty robust. They're basically mini sea containers so you can reverse into them. <laughs> You wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to, but you know someone's <laughs> yeah. going to do it in a van. Yeah. <laughs> so you want it to be sturdy so it can take a knock and potentially last a long, long time. And these, they are, so I love the whole, they're heavy. They're heavy. Yeah, they are heavy. Obviously, there's no batteries in there. It's all just taking the, the energy from the yeah, big cube. Yeah, so these, these basically wire in with commando sockets from one, and then they plug into the side of the cube where it's got its power outputs, basically. Genius.